Good afternoon guys, what's going on? Today I wanted to do a quick workbench and toolbox tour. I do small engine repair, so hopefully this will help some of you who want to go into small engine repair and show you sort of what kind of tools and stuff like that that you'll need on a daily basis. So let's jump right in. So this is my bench grinder. It's a jet 8 inch industrial grinder, 5 8 arbor, 1 horsepower motor. I have a coarse grinding wheel on it and a wire wheel on it. It originally had a fine wheel on it, but I took that off because I never used it. This is a lot more handy than that fine wheel. This wire wheel takes off just about any rust that you want it to take off. Very powerful motor on this thing, like I said, one horsepower. So it's a super good bench grinder, highly recommend it. So this drawer right here. It is my miscellaneous drawer. I've got an inspection mirror, electrical tape, clamps, plastic brush, which I use a lot for carburetors. This air gun, you can find it under any name you really want. They make these under Husky. I believe Matco makes one just like this. These are really, really common. I think they sell one at Harbor Freight. Uh, this one's the Husky one, but it works just fine. Doesn't have the rubber tip, but that's okay. I really don't need it for that anyway. This is a little fluid extraction tool I made from a syringe and a piece of fuel line. All important toothbrush for cleaning mostly carburetors and parts. Tire pressure gauge, temperature gun, all sorts of random stuff in here. I got the spark plug. I have a spark plug tool, gapper feeler gauge, all sorts of random stuff in here. This next drawer right here has a steel chainsaw tool in it. Uh, it's got the spark plug wrench and the flathead on it. This is a small Pittsburgh Harbor Freight flathead that I've ground down to use on carburetors that have a center jet, specifically Hondas. Cobalt scraper, Harbor Freight picks. These aren't the best picks, but they work fine for what I use them for. Steel tool, this one has, I believe, a T25. It might be a T27, I'm not sure. Snap-on stubby screwdrivers, these are really old. I believe the handle's made of wood on these. Very durable screwdrivers. These do come in handy whenever you need them. I had to use this one right here on a Kawasaki oil drain because there was a limited amount of space to unscrew the oil drain between the frame and the oil drain. Cobalt works drivers. I plan to put something back here. It might be a set of pry bars. I'm not too sure yet. All right, this is my pliers drawer. I've got Nipex, needle nose pliers. Here is the, y'all can't really see that can. There you go. 26, 12, 200. These are the comfort grip needle nose pliers. These work really well. They're my go-to pliers. You got some cobalt slip joint pliers. These work great on fuel line clamps and other small hose clamps like that. Side cutters, oil filter wrench, that's from Walmart. These are awesome pliers right here. These are Pittsburgh Automotive Harbor Freight hose removal pliers. These things are really, really good at removing any sort of small hose like fuel lines, vacuum lines, stuff like that. AutoZone clamp off pliers and then these are little cobalt mini pliers which I use for doing fuel lines on two strokes. All right this is my standard drawer I have cobalt breaker bar up there I believe it's an 18 inch breaker bar. Pittsburgh impact sockets I have a smaller cobalt 5 8 for doing zero turns blades on those you have to sort of get an impact under there without removing the mower deck so it takes a lot less time to do blade changes and then just a random 9 16 socket these are my go-to wrenches for standard and metric in fact uh, these are the gear wrench ratcheting wrenches non flex head non reversible these work really really well they're great high quality ratcheting wrenches cobalt hex keys cobalt mini wrenches I have this low profile Capri half inch 9 16 wrench. As you can see, it's very thin. 
And what I use this for is riding mower fuel shutoff solenoids. You have to get a thin wrench between the fuel shutoff solenoid and the carburetor bowl in order to remove the bowl of the carburetor. So this works really, really well for that. It has an excellent finish on it. Very high quality tool. And then I have some more random hex keys right there. All right, so this is the metric drawer. It's virtually the same. I've got the gear wrench wrenches right here, hex keys, mini wrenches, Herber Freight impact sockets, Husky 38 impact sockets, which I never use, and then some Husky torque sockets. All right, and here I've got a 16 ounce ball peen hammer, rubber mallet, pry bar. This is not really automotive grade, but it does the job fairly well. This is a long flathead screwdriver. I don't use it that often, but when I need it, it comes in really handy. Craftsman tape measure. And then I have some drill wire brushes. These are just cheap ones that I bought on Amazon. But they work really well for removing all sorts of rust and crud and all that stuff. And here I got some torque spits. It says unused blades, but it's just torque spits. And then I've got some bits right here. More bits. Spark plug sockets, a bit driver, and some wrenches that I don't really use that much anymore. In here I've got mostly air filters, but my astronomic tire inflator and my Harbor Freight Earthquake XT Impact is in here as well. That is a really good impact. I used it today to do some... To do a actually we can go over here I'll show you this so in order to change the belts on these Husqvarna mower decks you actually have to remove both of these spindle pulleys right here and that thing just took off both of these bolts like nothing this pulley right here is a little bit of a problem because it didn't want to come off but I was able to use my three jaw puller for that so that worked really well anyways Alrighty, that's about it for this drawer. Alrighty, final drawer here. I have my OTC leak down tester, OTC incandescent test light, OTC two jaw puller. I have a Husky quarter inch ratchet set that I use on the go. This is a pair of OTC snap ring pliers, 0.38 I believe. These are what I use for push mower transmissions. They have these little snap rings on them. These work really well for that. Harbor Freight torque sticks. Icon snap ring plier set. Power probe, aviation shears, and then a tap and die set standard. I don't have a metric one yet, but I'll get one soon enough. Alrighty, that's about it for this toolbox. And by the way, this box is obviously a U.S. General Harbor Freight box. It's a really, really high quality toolbox, despite being from Harbor Freight. I highly recommend it. All right, so let's move on to the workbench over here. In here, I've got some chemicals. I have WD-40, gunk, which I don't use anymore because it makes an absolute mess. PV blaster, gum out, carburetor cleaner, which I use so much that I have to order in bulk. And then some starting fluid that's from Lowe's. It's like motor medic or whatever. And then I just have some random stuff over here. Fuel line filters and uh, fuel line shutoffs. This is a magnetic pickup tool that goes with that inspection mirror that I showed in the first drawer. Snap-on screwdrivers. These are really old. I believe my dad got them secondhand from somebody. But they're still in excellent shape besides the paint splotches all over the long one right here. And there's some staining because of carburetor cleaner and stuff like that on the smaller ones. But these are really, really nice screwdrivers. I have another steel tool. This has the T25 and the spark plug wrench on the top. Craftsman flashlight. It's not streamlight or anything, but it does do the job. Used blade container. This is where I put good spark plugs right here. So if I think a spark plug is bad, I can just pop another one in and verify the issue. Red straws and a pin right here. You can never have enough of those red straws. 
Milwaukee Vice Grips. These are really, really good, mainly because of this knob right here. It's flat as opposed to round, so you can really get a good grip on it. Cobalt Channel Lock Pliers. These are really big, but they're really nice too. I don't use them that often, but again, it's another one of those tools that's really handy when you need it. Shop Towels Hornet Killer, because the Hornets seem to like my garage a lot. And then back here, you can sort of see them. I have cobalt bolt cutters. Those I don't use a lot either. This is my main diagnostic drawer down here. DeWalt drill bits, DeWalt impact bits, my oil filter gloves, which I use whenever I'm putting on an oil filter. This is a little memory saver device that I never use. The Nova 3100J Plus scan tool, AutoZone compression tester, Fluke 117 multimeter, that's a kick-ass multimeter. That thing was really, really nice. And then an AutoZone spark tester. And then in here, I don't use these crappy ratchets anymore. I've switched over to these Tecton ones. These are really, really high quality ratchets. Very low profile. Main Taiwan. Very, very good quality. These are some Tecton half inch impact extensions. And then the rest of my 227 piece tool set, which I put in another video. I have this old USA made crescent wrench. It's a 10 inch, I believe. It's very, very nice. Works very smoothly. Don't use it a lot, but it's a great tool to have. And then back here I have a flexible claw tool. And before I get onto the bottom there, because there's not that much, I'll go ahead and show you my main impact driver. This is my DeWalt DCF887, I believe. Yep, ZCF887. Works really well. I have the quarter inch anvil on it right now. That's what I use it for the most, the quarter inch sockets. I don't have quarter inch impact sockets because this thing is pretty low torque. I've never had one break on me. This is a very, very good tool for getting off small hardware, small bolts, stuff like that. It really helps speed things up. It's a great tool to have. All right, now down here, I have some three jaw pullers back there. Those are Tecton. I have a gear wrench serpentine belt set, zip ties. You can never have too many of those. Hose clamps. I think this bag is full of a bunch of plastic retainers for cars. This tube right here I bought online. It's for Kawasaki engines that are on zero turns mostly. You have to use a special tube to drain the oil on them. So that's what this is for. And then this one is for Briggs and Stratton's that don't have oil drain extensions on them. So you have to use this slide right here. And that has some various fluid retaining devices, I guess you could call them. Just random cups and stuff to put oil and gas in. And then down here is a half inch Tecton torque wrench. That's a great torque wrench. I don't use it much anymore, but it works great when I need it. And that is about it. If you have any questions, place them in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe and have a great day.